Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Usma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 19th of December. Fresh protests erupt across India against citizenship law, several detained. Pakistan's former president Musharraf calls death sentence personal vendetta. And talks have approached important states, says U.S. envoy Khalizad. And now for all the details. Scores of demonstrators were detained for defying a ban on assembly in cities across India as anger swells against a new religion-based citizenship law. The Citizenship Amendment Act gives paths to Indian citizenship to persecuted non-Muslim communities from three neighbouring countries, but excludes Muslims. Police in Indian capital New Delhi detained dozens of people protesting the religion-based Citizenship Amendment Act as they began to gather in front of the historic Red Fort in defiance of a ban on public gatherings on Thursday. Students, politicians and activists had called for a peaceful demonstration against the legislation which will give a path to Indian citizenship to persecuted non-Muslims from Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan. Protesters argue the act violates India's secular constitution as it does not include Muslims. Citing law and order concerns following violent protests against the act during the past week, authorities had imposed bans on Thursday in parts of New Delhi, northern Uttar Pradesh and southern Karnataka provinces. In Karnataka's capital Bengaluru, which is home to many multinational technology companies, several demonstrators defying the ban were also detained. The ban in the city was placed until December 21. It's a violation of secularism. We should maintain, we should retain the democracy here. That's why we are here. Meanwhile, security forces had to fire tear gas as the protests turned violent in Lucknow city of Uttar Pradesh. The situation was later brought under control, police said. On Wednesday, India's Supreme Court turned down a plea to halt implementation of the law, but said it would hold hearings next month on the sweeping measure, which critics have described as anti-Muslim. India and the U.S. agreed to deepen their bilateral cooperation in areas of defense, counterterrorism and trade, and to work with like-minded countries for a free and open Indo-Pacific region. The decisions were taken during their second 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue in Washington. India and the United States on Wednesday discussed a range of strategic issues and agreed to boost cooperation in areas of defense, trade, counterterrorism and for a free and open Indo-Pacific region as they held their second 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue in Washington. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Defense Secretary Mark Esper hosted their Indian counterparts, Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar and Defense Minister Rajnath Singh for the dialogue. Later in a joint press conference, the two sides announced inking of a number of agreements, including Industrial Security Annex, that will allow the transfer of defense technology. As per said, the U.S. is also working with India on a fair and reciprocal trade deal. Today's dialogue built on steady progress over this past year. We secured new agreements on space exploration and defense industrial collaboration. We agreed to establish a new exchange program for legislators from our two countries. We launched new initiatives to help secure internships for innovators in each of our two countries. And we're excited to support India's Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure. The first 2 plus 2 dialogue was held in New Delhi in September last year after the mechanism was approved by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and US President Donald Trump. 
In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's former military ruler Parvez Musharraf said on Wednesday that the special court's decision to sentence him to death in a high treason case was the result of a personal vendetta. The treason charges stemmed from his imposition of a state of emergency in 2007. Pakistan's former president Parvez Musharraf said late on Wednesday that the special court's decision to sentence him to death in a high treason case was the result of a personal vendetta. Musharraf, who was tried and sentenced in absentia, said in a video from his hospital bed in Dubai that the allegations against him were politically motivated. He said it was an unprecedented case in which neither the defendant nor his lawyer were allowed to defend the case. I is the question this case is going Hundreds of protesters took to the streets of Pakistan on Wednesday, a day after Musharraf was handed out death sentence on treason charges stemming from his imposition of a state of emergency in 2007. In Karachi, hundreds of supporters of Musharraf's All Pakistan Muslim League Party or APML gathered in a main market square, carrying banners, praising Musharraf and chanting slogans. Parvej Musharraf has army chiefs, the Sadar has the party, and he has worked for 40 years. He has fought for three So how can this be a war? This is not a war. He is a war for a war. Students and teachers of the Punjab University marched through the streets of Lahore in support of the Pakistan Army and Musharraf. Smaller protests were also reported from various cities across Pakistan. In news from Afghanistan, U.S. Special Envoy Zalmay Khalizad on Wednesday informed the Afghan peace process is approaching an important stage. The remark by Khalizad came as he wrapped up consultations with Afghan President Ashraf Ghani and other Afghan and U.S. officials, focused on efforts to finalize a deal with the Taliban. U.S. Special Envoy Zalmay Khalilzad has said the Afghan peace process is approaching an important stage. Khalilzad, in a series of tweets on Wednesday, informed that he has wrapped up a two-day consultation in Kabul and that the trip was productive. The special envoy during his visit to Kabul met a number of U.S. and Afghan officials, including Afghan President Ashraf Ghani, U.S. Ambassador John Bass, General Austin Scott Miller, the commander of U.S. and NATO forces in Afghanistan. Khalilzad's trip to Kabul came after a break was called in the U.S. Taliban negotiations following a Taliban claimed attack on Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan on December 11th. Before the break, Washington last month restarted talks on a possible withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan for the first time since U.S. President Donald Trump abruptly shut down negotiations in September amid increased violence. The Afghan environmental officials have prepared long-term and short-term plans to combat pollution, the country's National Environmental Protection Agency announced on Wednesday. This came as President Ashraf Ghani had earlier ordered a 10-day deadline to take serious actions to tackle pollution. Afghanistan's National Environmental Protection Agency, or NEPA, has informed that the environmental officials have prepared plans, both long-term and short-term, to combat pollution in the country. The agency on Wednesday said the plans would be submitted to the Afghan presidential office soon, as President Ashraf Ghani had earlier ordered a 10-day deadline to take serious actions in the reduction of pollution. NEPA has listed vehicular traffic, the use of old vehicles, burning wood, plastic, used motor oil for a heating house as some of the major sources of air pollution in Afghanistan.
According to reports, Afghan capital Kabul has been listed among the top 10 polluted cities in the world. In August, the government approved an action plan to prevent, reduce and manage air pollution in the city, which would require the distribution of up to 1 million masks to residents and asking fuel vendors to purify coal and reducing smoke-producing goods all over the city. Rohingya refugees living in Bangladesh have agreed to go back to Myanmar but with the country's citizenship. A delegation of Myanmar officials on Wednesday spoke to representatives of the displaced community in an effort to kickstart a process to repatriate them. Rohingya refugees who fled a military crackdown in Myanmar's Rakhine province in 2017 and have been living in Bangladeshi camps since then have said they are ready to go back with their citizenship. Rohingya representatives, after meeting a delegation of Myanmar officials that visited the refugee camp on Wednesday, said they want Myanmar to recognize them as an ethnic group with the rights to the country's citizenship before they return. The officials from Myanmar said they spoke to several dozen Rohingya refugees in an effort to kickstart a process to repatriate them. <laughs> We come to, uh, to the camp to meet with uh, a displaced person from the from the Rakhine, Rakhine and, and we explain the 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 the, our, the procedures procedures and our our effort to uh, to repatriate uh, uh, to facilitate the repatriation uh, the, the, of the uh, uh, displaced person. Earlier this month, Gambia accused Myanmar of violating the 1948 Genocide Convention over a military campaign that drove more than 730,000 Rohingya Muslims from Myanmar to Bangladesh. It has asked the International Court of Justice to order provisional measures to prevent more harm. Myanmar says it has been ready to accept back the refugees since January last year and has built camps near the border to receive them. Fresh snowfall in India's Kufri has made the hill station a favourite holiday spot for visitors from across the country. Hundreds of tourists are thronging Kufri to enjoy the snow games arranged by the local authorities. The snow-covered mountains of Kufri Hill Station in India have become a favorite tourist spot, attracting scores of visitors from across the country. After the recent snowfall, hundreds of tourists are thronging the hill station to enjoy the snow games arranged by the local authorities. The visitors can be seen enjoying skiing and locally discovered games like tube slides. With thousands of tourists reaching the place, People involved in the travel industry are happy with the boom in revenue. In Kufri, I am enjoying it. So snowfall here is very much, and we are all here enjoying it. Kufri and experience is very good. Skiing is very good. There are many adventurous activities here for doing. After that, the weather is quite good. The flow is quite good. Many tourists are coming. स्नो गेम भी हो रहा है इधर आप देख ही रहे हैं अभी ये लगभग ये समझो आप ये जो बर्फ है हमारे पास है कम से कम महीना भर चलेगा इस तरह का स्नो एक्टिविटी होता रहेगा टेम्परेचर्स इन नॉर्दर्न पार्ट्स ऑफ द इंडियन सबकॉन्टिनेंट स्कर्टिंग द हिमालयन फूड हिल्स डीप ट्रस्टिकली ड्यूरिंग द मंथ्स ऑफ दिसंबर एंड जनवरी ड्यूरिंग विंटर्स द हॉलीडे इन क्राउड फ्रॉम द प्लेन्स ऑफ इंडिया ट्रॉंग हिमालयन रीजंस टू एक्सपीरियंस स्नोफॉल well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Fresh protests erupt across India against citizenship laws, several detained. Pakistan's former President Musharraf calls death sentence personal vendetta. And talks have approached important stage, says US envoy Khalizad. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.